praise God. Hallelujah. You know, it's an honor to praise him. I just feel his presence. I feel his power. Amen. He's an awesome God. Praise almighty God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. I'm telling you right now, God's a God that does forgive. I don't care what we've done, where we're at, or what's going on in our life. If you come to the Lord with that open and honest heart to the King of Kings, uh, He's a God with mercy and grace, and He has it for you today. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel His presence right now so strong. Mm. So strong. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Good to see everybody in here uh, this morning. God bless you for being in the house of God today. Amen. And I like it, what God says. Where two or three are gathered, there I'm also. He's here uh, this morning, right now. Amen. Hallelujah. As we praise God and worship Him and get in unity together, you look out because God's going to move on your behalf. I'm telling you, He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I'm going to talk about a man today that I've talked about in the prisons a lot of times, and his name is King David. And you know that King David is going to rule and reign with our Lord. He's going to be one of the leaders. He's going to sit in Jerusalem, rule and reign, Jesus Christ. God's going to rule uh, over him, of course, and but he's going to be ruling and reigning. This King David I'm going to talk about made some mistakes in his uh, walk with the Lord. Have you ever made mistakes uh, in your walk with the Lord? I have. But I tell you right now, God loves you. I don't care what you've done. If you come back to him with an honest heart, he'll forgive you. And he'll give you that mercy and grace that your heart is yearning for. Amen. Your heart is crying out for it. God wants to give it to you. But it's, uh, it's uh, you know, we got to get old pride aside and get where we're supposed to be with the Lord. But we're going to talk about King David, and I like talking about King David. When I go into prisons, I talk about it because some of the prisoners uh, in there have done some uh, terrible things, and they feel like there's no hope or nothing. But I give them an example of King David where there is hope. Amen. Because this man committed adultery with Bathsheba and even had his friend Bathsheba's husband killed. He had blood on his hands. He had murder on his hands. He done evil, and he had anything he wanted. Why? Because God was with him. God was carrying him. He was victorious with Saul in many things uh, that he did, and battle was awesome. You can't even imagine uh, the uh, warrior that this man was. But he got uh, a little uh, uh, time on his hand, and he got caught uh, in a trap of the devil. You know, the devil is out there trying to destroy and just tear into pieces who, uh, who uh, that he can. But I'm here to tell you here this morning, uh, our God is a God that can uh, destroy the works of the devil. Did you know that? Uh, that's why Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen? Now, we're still living down here so flesh and old flesh mess up sometimes, don't we? But we're going to look and see what God said and just see uh, this morning. I want to talk about a little bit about David's request for forgiveness. Have you ever requested to God for forgiveness uh, in your life? Most all of us have. Amen. As we become Christians, uh, sometimes we mess up. But if we come back to God and ask God, God, please forgive us. We're sorry. God hears your prayer. Amen. But now if you're out there living in sin, if you backslidden and got back out there and you cry out to God, he don't hear you. If you're living in that sinful nature out there, he don't hear you. you got to get the iniquity out of your heart. Amen. And when you get it out, guess what? And you come to him with an honest heart, he hears you. And he's a God with mercy and grace. You know, we as Christians can ask to be renewed. Amen. We need to ask sometimes, God, renew us in your spirit so we can go uh, forward in a mighty way. Uh, I'll tell you, let's just look at this. We're going to go through... Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Psalms of Psalm 51, you can see a lot of David crying out, Lord, help me, forgive me, I'm sorry. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. Oh, that would be an awful thing. You know, I preached last night that uh, King Saul, you know, he had the Spirit, the Bible says he had the Spirit on, on him in 1 Samuel 10. 
and it said he had the spirit on him and he was a, a prophet and doing the things that God called him to do. But all of a sudden he got in witchcraft and all these other things. He committed sin. He killed himself and done all that. But what did it say? Uh, the Bible says that God took uh, the spirit from that man. That's what the Bible says. He had the spirit. And then he started sinning and doing wrong and God took it. Boy, I tell you right now, I don't want the Lord to take the Holy Spirit from me, do you? Amen. I, you know, that invisible force that's in us is awesome, isn't it? When uh, the power of God shows up, that invisible force was here this morning, is here now, was in us and moving around us. That's an awesome thing that God's given us. And uh, King David, he cried out, Lord, don't take it. Please don't take it from me. Let's look in Psalm 51 a little bit. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. You know, we as uh, Christians sometimes, if we mess up and do things wrong, we need to ask God, God, please blot out my sin. Cover me with your blood. Cover me, Lord. You know, sometimes, you know, when we're saved and on fire for the Lord, we're good to go there. But in our walk with the Lord, many times, I'm going to be honest with you, many times before I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I failed God. You know, I would serve God for six months and serve the devil for six months. That's just the way it was. And, boy, I'd come down the altar crying, and I wanted to do right, but the devil was bringing havoc on me uh, with the sinful nature that I was in. And uh, But I'm telling you right now, uh, God finally got a hold on me, and I got it right. Amen? That don't mean I'm perfect. That don't mean I still have to say, God, forgive me. I might have said something wrong or thought something wrong or done something that ain't right, and I know it. And God's convicting spirit will tell me that. That's a good thing that God uh, convicts you of something you're doing. That means that uh, he still loves you, amen, and he wants you to get it right. Praise God. Now let's go a little bit further here and look at the Word. Wash me thor uh, thoroughly uh, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. You ever been there? I have. King David was there. He was a man of God, loved God, and, uh, you know, uh, God was with him, and uh, but he messed up. He messed up, and here we see where King David is crying out to God. God, please forgive me. Help me, Lord. Lord, uh, help me uh, with this stuff. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. You see, that's one of the first things uh, we got to do as Christians, amen. We got to acknowledge that we have sinned against God. We got to acknowledge uh, that our transgressions are against God. And when we do that, get ready for my sin is ever before me. It's there. I'm asking God to forgive me for it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm talking to Christians here this morning too. Some of us Christians have secret sins hidden uh, that we do occasionally that ain't right. And God wants you to get it right. Amen? Because you get it right, he'll talk to you and fellowship with you. That's the first thing he'll do. You get in your prayer closet and start crying out to the Lord. Uh, he's going to convict you of something maybe you got going on ain't right. He wants you to get it right so we can have fellowship with him. Amen? That's all you got to do. Wash me thoroughly from my inequities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge, I acknowledge, Lord, I'm doing wrong. Help me. Help me. Give me strength to do it right. And my sin is ever before me. Help me to get it right, Lord. Amen. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in my sight uh, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. You know, David had enough sense. Hey, God, I want you to judge me, not man. I want to be judged by God too, don't you? Because he's a true God. He'll judge correctly, amen? Won't be no biasness in there. Behold, I was uh, uh, shapen in inequity and in sin. Then my mother's conceived me. I, what does that say? I was born in sin. I was born in it. The world that uh, Adam and Eve sinned, it cursed the whole race, didn't it? Look here, behold, thou desirest truth uh, in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hospice, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter uh, than snow. Hallelujah, praise God. God's a God can do that. Did you know that? He is the only one that can do that, by the way. His son is the only one who can Amen? Think about it. 
You've got to go through his son to get to the king, God Almighty. Look here. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the, the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. You can see King David here was crying out to the Lord because he realized he had sinned. Nathan the prophet came to him and told him, said, you're sinned against Almighty God. You are the man who has innocent blood on your hand. Now think of all the blood that, uh, uh, that, Nathan, I mean, that King David shed. But this was wrong. He murdered Bathsheba's husband. Now let's go a little bit further down here. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Blot them out. Take that uh, beautiful hand of your God and blot out my sins. Amen. You know who blots them out today? Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. We have to cry out to the Lord sometime and ask God, God created me a clean heart. Amen. I tell you right now, sometimes the old heart gets cluttered up, don't it? Well, you got to get back on your knees and cry out to God and he'll create in you that clean heart. Amen. It, uh, he'll renew the right spirit. Uh, he wants the right spirit renewed in him. He'll renew the right spirit in you and I. Amen. When you come to him, ask God, Lord, renew my spirit to where it's supposed to be. Amen. Uh, cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. You see that? Oh, David was a scared the Lord's going to take the Holy Spirit from him. I tell you right now, boy, I don't want the Holy Spirit to be taken from me. Do you? Uh, the, the Holy Spirit is what? Our helper. He helps us so when we uh, fight against the enemy and do those things. Think about it. He is an awesome God, and he loves us so much. Restore unto me the joy of, the, of, of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, he was in torment, wasn't he? He knew he had sinned. He was convicted. Lord, I've been sinning. I've been doing wrong. God, please help me, God. Draw me back. Restore the joy of thy salvation. Let me know that I am saved. Did you know I was preaching to those folks last night about uh, once saved, always so saved? It's not so. I showed them many uh, things in God's Word that uh, uh, some people that uh, that's done wrong, and, and Saul was one of them that God took the Spirit back. Amen. But you see what uh, 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 King David's holler says, Restore me the joy of thy salvation. Did you know when you backslide and get back out into the world that you're on death row again? Did you know that? Uh, oh, yeah. You, just because uh, you're backslidden and you was once saved, you've uh, uh, re-announced God and went back out into sin. You've got to come back and do your works again. You do. Because if you die and you're in a uh, if you are saved and on fire for the Lord and all of a sudden you said, hey, I'm going back out in the world and I'm going to go back out here and drink and get in this bar and do what I want to do. And if you die at that time, guess what? You go to hell. Your salvation ain't no good. It's void. But when you come back to the Lord, guess what? He puts your name back in the book. He puts it back in and you have salvation. I like that thing my, my brother told me one time. He said, Brother Rick. I had to go all the way back to the cross. What he was telling me that he failed God, he backslid, he'd done some bad things, and he realized that he had to come back to the foot of that cross and say, God, please forgive me. And when he done that, he got it back right again. And when he done that, guess what? His name was put back in the book of salvation. Amen? That's some things that we have to do uh, as Christians. And if you get back in that... Uh, a backslidden condition, boy, you on dangerous territory. Amen. Uh, restore, in other words, help me, Lord, uh, unto me the joy of thy salvation to know that. Hey, uphold me with thy free uh, spirit. You know, this is good. I, I was just going to go through a few of these things in uh, Psalm 51 because I've got some more scriptures here, but this is good, isn't it? This whole scripture is eat up with good stuff that we need to uh, uh, take mind to. Then will I teach transgressors uh, thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You know, when we become a Christian and on fire for the Lord, guess what? <laughs> and you have walked a walk, okay? You can tell others about what God's done for you, how God brought you back, how you was out there in a, a, a world that was going to be destroyed, and how God brought you back. You can help others, amen? 
Have you ever noticed uh, some of the walk that you go through? It might be terrible at the time, but God helps you go through that walk. Have you ever noticed how you can uh, uh, testify to somebody else that's going through that walk and you can relate and they can relate? They kind of grab a hold of you. You ever notice that? You ever notice how God will use you when you've gone through certain things to help other people? Oh, yeah. That's an awesome thing, isn't it? So uh, God turns it around to be good, doesn't he? Let's go a little bit further and look and see. Deliver me from uh, blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. We was praising God just now a while ago, crying out to him, amen. O Lord, open thy lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I will give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are broken. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. You know, David's saying right here, for thou despises, uh, de for thou desirest not sacrifices. David is saying there, hey, the sacrifices of a lamb and bulls at the altar ain't good enough. It's not good enough. I got to come to you. Else will I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. In other words, you come to me. David said, I'm coming to you. Not with those burnt offerings. I'm coming to you. Of sacrifices of praise and ask you to help me. Amen. You see there? You see what that is? Let's go a little bit further. Be good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build up thy walls of Jerusalem. There's some more walls again, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, now let's go on. <coughs> I want to look in Revelations. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to look at Revelations uh, 2 5. It talked about repenting. Remember, therefore, thou whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do thy, what, do thy what? Do thy first works, or else I'll come unto thee quickly, and I'll remove thy candlestick out of the place, except thou what? Repent. What do we have to do as Christians? We have to repent, don't we? If we've done something wrong and you know it's against God, repent. Don't let that thing hang over there. Get on your knees and cry out to God and get it straight. Amen? Because it's just like our, our parents. They loved us. We, we didn't, uh, uh, they didn't have to teach us to do wrong, did they? We naturally did that, didn't we? They had to teach us how to do right. And they did that. Why? Because they loved us. Well, our Heavenly Father loves you and I. And if we got something going on that's not good in our lives, He's going to tell us and He wants us to repent of it and come to Him. Amen? Think about it. That's an awesome thing. I like that. We got to repent. God forgive me. And, uh, uh, and do thy what? Do thy first works. Go back to the cross and say, God forgive me. And uh, He's a God with mercy and grace. You know, in, in uh, 1 John 1, 9, uh, it says, I use that a lot when I lead people to the Lord. It says, uh, if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now, I want to tell you right now, that's for a Christian. Do you know that? A Christian. Praise God. So we need to confess our sins to the Lord, and we need to repent. Amen. You know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If we walk in the light, he is the light. We have fellowship with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Jesus cleanses us from that sin. Amen? His blood, hallelujah, praise God. And uh, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. God knows our hearts. He knows everything about us. You know that? You can't hide nothing from God. And it says if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to give us sin. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's an awesome God. Let's look at Matthew 2. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. But one day, materialistically, the kingdom of God is going to be here. Amen? The kingdom of God here is now. And guess what? You and I have to abide by the kingdom of God's laws, don't we? If God says don't do this, don't do it. Because he says that for you and I. We're in the kingdom of God now when you get saved and you're with the Lord. You're in his kingdom, and we abide by his laws. Just like we abide by those laws out, out, out there of the land, guess what? If you 
uh, trespass or do something wrong in those laws out there, you'll go to a jail place that I was in, some of us in last night, and those guys did wrong, and they had to pay the price for it. Same way in God's kingdom, if you're doing something wrong that's not right, you're going to have to pay a price for it. King David cried out to the Lord of all these things, God, forgive me, I repent and everything. Well, as we go down and look and see what God did, God forgave him. But the Bible says the sword would not leave his house. So he had some accountability there that he had to uh, belly up to, didn't he? That's what the Bible says. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go a little bit further and, and look right here. In Luke 13, 3, it talks about repent or perish, bottom line. You repent or you perish, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. I tell you, all those people of the world that don't want to come to the Lord and believe in him and say, Lord, forgive me, I repent of my sins. See, we sin against God. And when we do that, we need to repent and ask God to forgive us, and he will. But he said, if you don't, you're going to perish. And ain't no in-between. He's God. He's God Almighty. Let's look at Isaiah 61, 16 uh, through 20. It talks about the people learn to do well. You know, when you become a Christian, what do you do? You learn to do well, don't you? When you become on fire for the Lord, what do you do? You learn to do well. And how do you do that? You get in God's holy word, and you read and study, and you find out what his laws are and what he has for you. It's, it's great to be a Christian because you're going to get joy that passes all understanding, peace that passes all understanding. It's going to come from God. Amen. It's going to come from Almighty God. Let's go a little bit further right here and look at this, Isaiah. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil. Is that what God's telling us to do? We have to cease from doing evil. Think about it. Learn to do well. Learn. Learn to do. Ju uh, seek judgment. Relieve uh, 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 the oppressed. Uh, judge the fatherless. Plea for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though, uh, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Let's look at the word here. If we be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land i tell you right now when you become saved and on fire for the lord and you continue to walk that walk regardless of what's going on around you god's taking care of you he's going to you're going to get the goods of the land you know and i want to tell you it rains on the righteous and unrighteous don't think that uh, just because you're a christian you everything uh, is not going to happen to you i tell you right now when you become a christian the devil's going to do what He's going to bring havoc on you if he can. But there's where you got to get in God's word and you got to learn. Say The Bible says if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. So we have to resist. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go a little bit further. But if we refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now look, look at Isaiah uh, 1, 4, and 5. Let's talk to America right here, the USA, the United States of America. All sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, that have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Because that's what's happening in America today. Is that what's happening in America today? Yes, it is. We see time and time again where even states are pulling away and they're being anti-God in America. In America, it talks about in God we trust. Amen? Is that what the Bible says? I mean, that, that's what we said in our Constitution, in God we trust. Look what America's doing, pulling away a sinful nation. And I'll tell you right now, America, the sinful nation, will pay the penalty for that. Look at here. Why should you be stricken anymore? Ye will revoke more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. We see it from the top of our uh, White House down, don't we? Things going on is not a, a godly manner. If we regard iniquity in uh, of my heart, the Lord 
will not hear me. What does that say? If you've got sin in your heart, you're not, the Lord's not going to hear you in your prayers and things that you need from the Lord. Get it out. Get it out. That's what you got to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. You got to repent and get it out. Hallelujah. Think about it. The Lord will not hear. Let's look in Psalms. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Here's where David's saying, hey, God heard me. He hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Why? Because he repented. He cried out to God. Let's look a little bit further right here. And uh, blessed be uh, the God which hath not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. You see that right there? He is not. So he got his heart right there, didn't he? Let's go a little bit further right here and look. Forgive seven times seven. Well, let's look at three, five. I think I used three, five last night. We've got to be overcomers. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. What does it say? God can blot out the name if he wants to. If it wasn't so, he wouldn't have that scripture in here. I told him that last night when I was preaching. Let's look right here a little bit further. Mark, uh, uh, it talks about in Mark, uh, we're going to see it here in just a minute, but uh, let me see, that's uh, Mark. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, he goeth before into Galilee, for they shall see him as he said unto you. I wanted to bring that scripture up. What did it say do? Go tell Peter. Peter sinned against God, didn't he? Peter denied him three times when he went to Calvary. Did you know that? And God said, he, he told Peter, he said, you're going to deny me three times. You're going to fall back. And uh, But when you are converted, and see, so God knew already, and he prayed for him. He died on the cross. He Peter denied him three times, and Peter went and wept in sorrow because what he had did to his Lord. That's the Peter that said he would die for him. That's the Peter that ran. That's the Peter that cut off the centurion's ear. That's the Peter who sinned against our Lord. But the Lord, when he came out of the tomb, he told Mary Magdalene, he said, go tell uh, his disciples and Peter, and Peter. So he forgave Peter, didn't he? And Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee. And there shall ye see him, as he said unto you. Is that awesome or what? That's a good example right there, isn't it? that we serve a God that does forgive. If it wasn't for that, we'd have no hope. Let's look at, uh, I want to look at uh, 2 Samuel 12, 13. This is talking about Nathan. Nathan the prophet came back to David, and let's see what Nathan told David after David cried out these things to the Lord. And David said unto him, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, but thou shalt not die. Is that what happened? Did, did King David cry out to the Lord with a bunch of my heart, of his heart? He cried out to the Lord, and guess what? When he did and he repented, God heard his prayer, and God told the prophet Nathan, The Lord hath put away thy sin. That's what the Lord will do for you if you've got something going on. You know, God will have mercy on you. He'll blot out your transgressions. He'll wash you from sin. He'll cleanse uh, uh, you. Uh, he'll make uh, you to hear joy and gladness again. He'll restore your salvation. It's yours again if you want it. You've got to uh, ask the Lord, take not the Holy Spirit from me, create in me a new clean heart. Renew me. That's what God, uh, that's what King David wanted. He is an excellent example of crying out to the Lord after he, he did some terrible stuff, but God forgive him for all of it. God is an awesome God, isn't he? I'm telling you, he's an awesome God. I want everybody in here to bow your head, please. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to be honest. And uh, don't worry about it because uh, just be honest with God because we all have to cry out to the Lord sometimes. I do, and uh, I ask God sometimes, Lord, please forgive me. I'm sorry, you know. Think about it right now. You got anything going on in your life that uh, you know it ain't right? 
and God's convicting you of it this morning. You know it's not right. God is convicting you of it. He's telling you, get it out of your life so we can fellowship. I love you. I want to give you mercy and grace, but it's your choice. You've got to repent of it. You just ask God, forgive me, and he will forgive you. He will forgive you. Now, I want to ask a question right now. I'd like to ask this question before I pray for the folks on the Internet. Is anyone in this uh, uh, sanctuary this morning that wants to be saved, I want you to raise your hand right now because I want to pray for you. Anybody? Or is there anyone? I see that hand. Yes, raise that hand up. Be proud. God loves you. Anybody else in here that wants to be rededicate their life to the Lord? That you know that you backslidden and you know you got to come back to the cross and you got to ask God to forgive you. Anywhere, anybody, raise your hand. I see those hands. Now, now, now we're going to pray, and I'm going to. I want you to pray this prayer with me when we pray, and I'm going to pray for the folks on the internet too. Everybody, pray this prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. God, I just repent to you this morning. God, if I have any inequity in my heart, please forgive me, God. I want to come back to you, God. And, Lord, you said if I confess my sins, that you're faithful and just, and you forgive me of my sins. And, God, I confess right now, please forgive me, like the song. Please forgive me, oh, God. And did you know God loves you, and he's forgiving you right now? you on the internet if you uh, cry out to him right now and ask him to come in your heart and say God I repent renew my spirit he will do that he's renewing your spirit right now in the holy holy name of Jesus and everybody said amen amen God bless you God bless you now I want to tell you I'm going to ask my sister back here 